Welcome back. This lecture is going to be on branding personally and professionally. Uh, you could apply this to uh, your social media accounts. You could apply this to your regular marketing efforts to brand yourself professionally. And so sit back, relax, and let's get started on this branding lecture. Hello once again, my name is Nick Carbonaro, Professor Nick Carbonaro here at Long Beach City College. You could find me on Twitter at NJ Carbonaro. If you're viewing this video, you could subscribe to me at uh, youtube.com forward slash Professor Nick Carbonaro. You could email me at carbonaro at lbcc.edu or look me up on my website at uh, www.nickcarbonaro.com. And today what we're going to be talking about is branding. Branding and, and, and the reason why it's important for you to personally and professionally brand yourself and what actually goes in to, to branding, right? We always hear this word branding and, and really when the word comes down to it, when I think of branding, I think of um, you watch those old western movies or, or, or dude ranch type of stuff, cowboy themed, where they brand the cow, right? Or they brand the horse and what it has is is that that logo on the back of the the horse or the cow to tell other ranchers and to tell other people out there that that's my property that it, that is who I am that's 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 the stuff that I own and so although we're not getting our brand uh, branded on us what we can realize is that our brand is who we are right our brand is what we own our brand is 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 what we want to own up to right and so you'll see in this lecture um, the reasons why will give a little uh, spin on on some people branding and, and, and their, their benefits of branding and everything like that. So um, so sit back, relax, and let's let's get started on this. So as you can see here, the very first slide we have is a is a is a crayon that sticks out, right? And that's just a very visual basic of hey, that's a brand, right? You're you're unique, you're different, you stand out from everybody, and so. If we look at here and we look and we continue to go through, a brand is a name, term, design, symbol, or other feature that distinguishes one seller's product from those of another. Now that is when you're trying to professionally brand a product or professionally brand a service. But however, you yourself with this digital social media presence we now have can do the same thing about yourself. So your brand is is your name. What do you go by? Is it your name? You'll see artists go by uh, uh, different names and everything. But your brand is your name, an idea that you that you have, a term or a definition of, of what you do, who you are, a design of, of, of your social media sites, of how you dress, of how you speak, of how you act, and a symbol. What do you represent? Uh, do you represent strength? Do you represent weakness? Do you represent winning? Do you represent losing? Do you represent creativity? Do you cre represent love? Do you do you represent warmth? What what is your uh, representative? Right? What are you representing? Representing, and it distinguishes one seller's product from another. And if you're doing this per professionally for yourself or personal branding for yourself, you are the product, right? How do you distinguish yourself from all the other job competitors? Uh, job. Uh, the people also competing for your job out there. So brands are used in business, marketing, advertising, and for personal branding. And each aspect is tied into your brand. So if you look at that, if you look at your brand, there's three portions of your brand that, that are affiliated with it. The first one is company, right? Affiliation with the company you work for, meaning where you work is important. What you do is important. If, if I'm a teacher, I have to live, I I represent a different brand than if I was a firefighter, if I was a doctor, if I was a politician, if I was uh, a CEO, right? Each person's job, each person's company, their affiliation with it um, represents something else. So me at Long Beach City College, I represent something based off of a bigger picture of Long Beach City College. If somebody works for for um, uh, the, the hospital, right? They represent the values of that hospital. If somebody works for a restaurant, they represent the values of that specific restaurant out there. So that definitely affects your brand. Um, professional, your professional projection. Where do you wanna go? What do you wanna do? If you're trying to get into the finance industry, you have to represent yourself in a different way than if you're trying to get into the digital arts industry, or if you're trying to get into dance or music, right? Each one of these have different aspects you need to push and you need to find your little position in the marketplace right you need to find out where where you're at and so um personal brand who you are is the last one right 
who you are personally, your values, your morals, your beliefs, your idea system, maybe a religious doctor that guides you, right? All these different things represent your brand. If you live by the golden rule, right? Do unto others as, as they want them to do to you, as you want them to do to you, well, then you're probably going to be living in a certain way compared to somebody that's like a YOLO lifestyle. You only live once, right? And so you, you have to understand who you are. You have to understand the company that you work for represents yourself. And then you have to represent your, you have to understand that the, your, your projection going forward in life professionally ties into your brand as well. And if we look at this thing called personal branding, it's the practice of people marketing themselves and their careers as brands. So previous self-help management techniques used to be all about self-improvement, right? You, you go and you build yourself up and now you're improved. Well, now it's more about self-packaging, right? It's, it's getting the product, you, and packaging it up nicely. So whether that's how you speak, how you dress, how you act, what your value system is, what your belief system is, um, what your social media presence is, how your work relate, related is to you, and packaging this all up for each individual place where you're trying to make yourself known as a brand, you would want to make sure that 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 success that success does comes from that self packaging, meaning it comes from how you represent yourself to the world out there, right? You could have two totally different lives and maybe eventually if one was completely bad and one was completely good, they would catch up to each other. What we're talking about here is not so much the, oh, I have a secret life over here. No, 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 no. What we're talking about is the way that I, for example, for me, right? I'm a college professor. So the way that I communicate with my students is different than the way that I communicate with my colleagues, with my with my co-workers with my other teachers that I teach with, right? It's not that one secret and, oh, I should only don't tell the students that I talk to the teachers like this or don't tell the teachers I talk to the students like this. No, no, it's not that. It's it's the vernaculars used. It's the examples used. It's the it's the, the, the position in the marketplace, right? I want to represent myself as a teacher and, and stand out as a teacher for a certain amount of reasons. Well, the same thing, I want to stand out as an as a educator and as a professional but I need to I need to stand out in different ways that that relate and that connect with my with my colleagues. So two different ways I have to package myself in two different ways to get there. And then when I go and talk to administration and when I go and talk to the private sector and try to get them involved to to help our thing, that's another package, right? So you're packaging yourself up, you're dressing yourself up for for different types of of um, areas that you're trying to go into. And so when you are in a competitive job market, right, the economy has bounced back. Uh, we can no longer use this excuse as being, well, you know, the economy is not very good anymore and and uh, just wait it out and do as much as you can because it's there, it's out there. Well, no. Um, speaking as of today on October 29th of 2017, we have two consecutive uh, months of 3% uh, job growth, 3% GDP. And if this keeps up, that's that's adding trillions of dollars to the, uh, to the national economy. And so you are in a competitive job market absolutely everybody's competing for jobs out there that's that's no doubt about it but it's not necessarily because the economy is poor it's because the skills are changing it's because what employers are looking for is different than what they were looking for from 10 years ago the uh the needs in a market have changed we're getting more digital we're getting more service we're getting more technical skills involved compared to com compared to uh push work why because 10 years ago that that push work that was promoted 10 years ago is probably automated by now is probably you can do it through through um databases spreadsheets all that different type of stuff i mean just just go to your fast food station fast food um go to your bank right clearest example back in the day banks used to be a huge huge business right and they still are a huge business but i mean huge institution you used to walk in and there was a nice little you know um foyer and they had people sitting at desks and they had uh, tellers behind the stations and all that type of stuff now you could fit an entire bank in a grocery store right you have a couple tellers but a lot of it's digital a lot of it's online so you are in a competitive job market and that's the reason why we teach this class and that's the reason why this uh module why we do stuff is with an infographic and with uh and with um and with linkedin because those are two things that are going to make you stand out. It's going to make you that, that little red guy in that picture right there to actually stand out and become something different in the marketplace. And so um, if we look forward, how, how do you stand out, right? How, how do you stand out in the marketplace? Um, 
it is tough to impress. And so one of the things, and it's hard to differentiate yourself. However, if you know who you are, and if you're on the right platforms, we can make it easier for you, right? And, and later on in this module, if, if you're in my class, you would see the LinkedIn video that I have the profile checklist and a little uh, LinkedIn guide that LinkedIn gave me to say, hey, you know, this is this is what uh, this is what college students are are, are really doing right now. So um, make sure when we're going out in the job market, make sure you're you're finding out who you are, right? Now whether that's that's reading. Um, books that that under that get to uh you know there's there's a great book called strengths finders where it tells you exactly what is your type of strength out there um there are those uh myers briggs tests where they tell you what type of personality you are right all those different things yes they help however you got to take that and then package it to the to the position that you're trying to apply to and so your personal brand is your reputation right your personal brand is your reputation. It, it all leads back to your reputation, who you are, what you do, right? Um, and reputation and character are two different types of things, right? Uh, the famous John Wooden, the basketball coach for UCLA, he said, reputation is merely what people think you are, right? Character is really who you are, right? Now, however, that's true, 100% true make sure your character and your reputation are blended together that's what he was getting at he was like yeah you could be have a great reputation you have a poor reputation um and you can have a great character or a poor character right hopefully all those uh hopefully both of those your your character and your reputation match and blend up right are matching because when your reputation is positive but then your character is negative well then maybe they catch up to you right maybe sometime the, those two roads those two roads actually meet or your reputation is bad, but you know who you are deep down inside is good. Maybe if you wanna change people's minds, maybe it's the packaging that you're using. Maybe it's the way that you come across. Maybe it's the, the words you choose, the dress that you wear, the, 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 way, that you, the way that you do certain things out there. And so um, we gotta make sure that when we, that when we go through this, uh, your reputation and trying to figure out what your reputation is, um, that you're connecting it with your with your character with your character out there so your professional brand is correctly defined is a correctly defined professional brand makes certain an individual company has identified understands and communicate exactly who she is what she does and why anyone should care to remember her so who you are what you do and why anyone should care about you right it's to sum it up three simple things about your professional brand who you are, which is what we're gonna be putting on LinkedIn, and it's gonna describe who you are. What you do, your profession, hobbies, volunteer work, um, anything like that. Why anyone should care about that? How does that relate to that? And if you're sitting there and going, you know what, I've never had a job before. I've never been part of an organization. Never been part of anything. Well, you've been probably part of a family. Um, and so you've had to deal with people, right? Whether that's a uh, a biological family, an adoptive family, a church family, a school family, a sports family, an art family, something like that, right? You've, you've been part of something in life. You, you had to have been, right? Nobody walks around here alone the entire world. So you've had to have been part of something. So even that experience you can put down for your professional brand, right? If all you've done was babysit your, your brothers and sisters, well, then guess what? time management skills, discipline skills, organizational skills, um, uh, interpersonal skills, how to deal with how to deal with the, the children there and communication, all those different types of things, even the just off of babysitting, right? So that type of thing, there, there's no excuse of saying, well, I've never done anything in life. You have done stuff. You just need to talk about it. You need to find it out. And so it says right here, strong brands are unique, right? Strong brands have a unique value, a reputation, right? Think about all those companies right there. Google, YouTube, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Yahoo, Apple, MasterCard, Samsung, Unilever, Amazon. All of those have different, when I say them, they bring up different feeling, they bring up different um, emotions, they bring up different stuff. So um, strong brands have that unique value reputation out there. And so let's see. What is it? Let's see some more uh, things. So what's the difference between here, right? We got a nice little Starbucks coffee on the left. We got a nice uh, piece, uh, generic cup of coffee on the right. 
Now the difference is, the difference is looking at these two cups, not only design and manufacturing, but it may be taste, it may be quality, right? But a lot of people will say, oh, you know what? I like 7-Eleven coffee way better than I like Starbucks coffee. And, oh man, Starbucks is too long of a line and I could just go into my gas station and get a real quick cup of coffee, which is true. So what is the difference, right? You have to think about what the difference is. And the difference is expectation, right? That's the huge difference, expectation. You, if you drank a Starbucks cup of coffee and it tasted just like the, the generic cup of coffee and you thought that was a bad taste, well, then you expected it to taste something like Starbucks, right? So what is the difference between this is the expectation. If you have a Starbucks cup of coffee, you not only expect the product to be there, but the service, the quality, whatever you're doing with it to be there as well. So uh, make sure we look at that and understand the difference between uh, the expectation. So when you come in dressed for a job interview and your shirt's untucked, your, your, your shoes don't match, your hair's out of whack, makeup not put on properly, all that different type of stuff. What does that say to the employer, right? What do they expect from you, right? What's the expectation from you? So that's what we're getting at, expectations. So think about all these different type of people, right? Think about all these, oopsie, sorry. Think about all these different type of people, right? We have Steve Jobs. What, what do you expect when you hear his name? Tiger Woods, depending on what year you were born, depending on what time you watch TV, what did you expect from that? Kim Kardashian. What's that expectation like when, when you think of these people? What is their personal brand? Oprah, what's their personal brand? We got right below Oprah, Harvey Weinstein, right? Right now, huge thing going on with the rape allegations and the sexual assault allegations and all that type of stuff. What's what's his brand? What and, and, and what does his brand do to Hollywood, right? If he's representative of Hollywood, what does that say about Hollywood culture, right? The job that you do, all those three things that take into account. Think about all these people that you see on screen. Charlie Sheen, what's his brand? Kobe, what's his brand? J.K. Rowling, what's her brand? Lastly, what's a what's a Anthony Weiner's um, a brand, right? If you don't know what, who he is, go look him up, right? Um, politician in New York got caught sexting, denied it the first time. Andrew Breitbart actually broke the story, and uh, he he denied it. Said, "Oh, Breitbart's a kook. He doesn't know what he's talking about." Next thing you know, it came out he did, and then he apologized for it. And then it came out even more stuff he did, and then. Uh, the, the the allegations that, that came about with um, with uh, with the um, a, a year ago actually a year ago right around now because we're in October 29 2017 when the when the FBI reopened the Hillary Clinton investigation with the emails a lot of it was suspected that it was because of him because he was uh, he just got arrested got put in the jail for 21 months for uh, child pornography and child sexting right child pedophilia type of stuff and so um, and his wife, Huma Abedin, is best friends with Hillary Clinton. She had access to her emails on her thing. So they actually found some of it based off of his, his usage on the internet in that other court case out there, right? So what does his brand do in politics? What does his brand do in, in the personal life? If you're trying to go out to be a mayoral candidate and to, and to maybe even run for governor one day and stuff, it, it just shows you what, what, that your, 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 your character always catches up with your reputation at some point, right? And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, right? Tiger Woods' character was very poor, right? Secretly, he was doing some bad stuff. Uh, publicly, his reputation his reputation uh, took a hit after it, right? He had a great reputation and a horrible reputation. So you could put any picture of anybody on this list. We do, the, I, I use these in our class because um, they're very polarizing. So the, the students get to engage and, and talk about why they like somebody because half the class will like Kim Kardashian, half the class will hate Kim Kardashian. So, um, but the fact that like 50% hate you, 50% love you means 100% are talking about you, right? And that's what we're talking about here. What do these brands represent? What do these people represent? So when I say Steve Jobs up here in the top left corner, is he just a name or is, or do you think of Apple when you think of Steve Jobs? When I tell you Michael Jordan, Right? Do you think of Michael Jordan or do you think of Nike? Right? The connection between the two. What what does Oprah represent? Right? Success, fame, fortune, perseverance, um, uh, barrier breaking, all those different types of things. Right? You got you got to come through and think about yourself and what do you want to be recognized as? Right? What does your brand want to be recognized when you go into the uh, when you go into a, a workplace like that? 
So what do you want what do you want to mean to other people? What are your unique strengths, skills, attributes? How do you choose the career that's right for you? What do you want to be known for? What will make you stand out in the eyes of potential employers out there? You got to discover yourself. You got to know who you are. And that leads into your social media brand, right? That leads into your social media brand up here. So uh, what do you want to do with your social media accounts? Maybe you want to start your own business. Maybe you want to differentiate yourself from your competitors and you're just trying to get a professional presence on there. Maybe you want to sell more. Maybe you have a product out there that you want to sell more. Maybe you want to connect with others in meaningful ways. And this only happens if your professional and your personal brand kind of blend together. If you want to sell more and you own a company, well, guess what? Maybe they want to know who the owner is. Maybe they want to know who you are, what gave you the idea, what inspired you to do stuff. So you have to, you have to really think about that as well. You got to define your objective. What do you hope to achieve when people search for your name? What do you want them to see? If you want people to see your work experience and receive new opportunities in your area of expertise, concentrate on your LinkedIn. If you want to promote your content to a wider audience, maybe try to increase your Instagram or Twitter followers. If you're trying to sell artwork, maybe Pinterest or Instagram would be your best option. Facebook is definitely there and we're going to get into Facebook later on in the semester. So, um, so all these different types of things you have to understand on social media each social media is, is another place where you could try to sell your stuff. And that's the reason why in our previous uh, um, homework things where we created uh, GIFs, you know, GIFs and memes, we, I told you, I asked you, what platform do you want to put this on, right? And I graded based off of that as well. Because depending on the platform you're on will depend on the type of products that you sell and, and how you sell it. So identify up to three areas of expertise, right? What do you want to be known for? Whom do you want to connect with? What makes you unique, right? Again, those same things, who you are, what you do, why you do it, right? What makes you unique? Why, who do you want to connect with? What do you want to be known for, right? What do you want to be known for? Develop a strong positioning statement. When creating your statement, always keep your audience in mind. Although the statement is about you, it's not necessarily for you, right? You gotta understand, who are you trying to connect with, right? And connect with them. We talked about that when we, when we talked about virality. It's all about the connection process. Same thing, if you want your professional and personal brand to go viral, right, in a sense, you have to find a great position for you, like who you are, what you do, where you do it. Use a consistent look and feel. The idea is to make yourself more memorable. People are more likely to remember you if you use a consistent look and feel on all platforms. Make sure you understand who you are, what you do, and, and how you do it. And if um, the, the color scheme, the word phrasing, the choice of words, all that type of stuff ties beautifully well together, well, then people are going to remember you. People are going to remember you. And so we have right here this last one, what is your brand, right? Your personal brand matters, kind of wrapping things up. It's a reputation, right? It's your calling card. It's your digital calling card now. It's who you are, what you're known for, how people experience you. So do they have a positive or negative vibe when they, when they know you, get to work with you, meet you? It says who you are and what you do, right? And then uh, PricewaterhouseCooper created this thing called your personal brand workbook. Um, Price Waterhouse Cooper, the consulting firm, says delivering your brand clearly and consistently will create a memorable experience in the minds of those you interact with and can open doors to new opportunities, right? And so that's what we're trying to do in this class. We're trying to make sure that, that your social media presence opens up those opportunities for you to meet other people. So for this module, if you're in my class and you're watching this, what we do in this module is we create infographics, we create a LinkedIn profile, right? And if you go to our, our course homepage, there is the, the link to the LinkedIn profile uh, lecture as well. And there's a link to this one. And then your two assignments are creating an infographic and creating a LinkedIn profile. And those will get you connected professionally, right? In a unique way, right? In a unique way. And so those types of things, what we want to do is after we create them, create the infographic, put it on your LinkedIn profile. And the video will teach you how to download files on your LinkedIn profile and, and everything regarding um, uh, LinkedIn. So. Um, with that, uh, hopefully this, this video lecture helps you out understanding what a brand is, what your personal brand is, and how you can connect that to the real world. So um, I look forward to seeing all of you connect with me on your professional brand on LinkedIn. And 
as well as on my website and my Twitter account and my YouTube page. Again, just other ways to brand myself out there. So if you have any questions, you could always shoot me a comment, shoot me an email, shoot me a tweet, um, or anything like that. Otherwise, have a great one, and I will see you next time.